Yo, this is One Nine, director and producer of Nas Time is Illmatic. This is Eric Parker, writer producer of Nas Time is Illmatic. And you're watching allhiphop.com. What did you first think of when you first heard Illmatic for the first time? Wow. Um, well, back, let's go back a little bit. At, at that time, I was, I was in the D.C. area. Um, I was a graffiti artist, street artist, listening to... Prior to that, I listened to Eric B and Rock Kim, listening to Cool G Rap, um, Gangstar, um, man, probably some Wu Tang. Um, but you know, I knew about Live at the Barbecue. I heard that. I, I was a big Main Source fan, so I was listening to that. Um, but I knew the buzz. I felt it. I, I was hearing about this kid, Nasty Nas, Nasty Nas, and I was. All my friends were anticipating this album. I don't even remember if I bought. 94 if it was the wax or the tape probably both mm -hmm. but no i'm pretty sure i bought the wax but I, I remember the first time i put it on and you know the intro with the wild style beat and i was like oh man here we go it's mm -hmm. building and then you hear that new york state of mind drums and i was like it just i was like i don't even think i got too far into it i think i probably put the needle back or rewound it and i was like i gotta hear that again and then once you hear this flow and the lyrics I was like, man, I kept playing the tracks over and over and over again. And then probably got on the phone and said, did you listen? I'm only like a track in. And then, you know, I would play Life's a Bitch and World Is Your World Is, by the time you got to World Is Yours, I'm like, I can't, I'm like losing it. I'm losing it. And I think I had to keep going back. It was just an amazing, like sonically, it sounded incredible too, because he was using jazz samples and the drums were so hard. But then lyrically, he was painting these pictures. And I was just like, man, he's killing it. He's killing it. I was like, I don't think I've heard, and I got that excited before um, listening to, to hip hop. It was like, I just remember that. And I remember going to a friend's houses and, you know, everybody's sitting in the little cyphers, probably like one light on, and we just kept playing that over. It was just an amazing, amazing time period. But it's vague, it's kind of hazy, yeah. but that's what I remember. <laughs> 20 years ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> when I first heard Illmatic, it was. You know, it's hard to say exactly. Like, I don't have the moment where I'm sitting here and I remember hearing it. It almost felt like it was always there. And I think part of that comes from it was bootlegged early on. So some of it was dribbling and dribbling, you know, dribbling out. But I know I had that tape. And I know I had a tape because I broke the tape. <laughs> and everybody who bought the tape broke the tape. That's a fact. They just, everybody, nobody kept held on to their tape because it got so much burn. But you know, the thing that struck me about Elmatic, you know, at that time was I never, and, and nobody had ever heard, people have heard like Koji Rap, who was a rapid fire rapper, and he, you know, polysyllabic, syllab, syllab, uh, he, he rhymed, you know, multiple syllables. Uh, people heard Rakim, who had a, who was a word economist. He didn't, he didn't waste words, you know, and he had a certain aura about himself. But nobody heard somebody rhyme, put those together, and then rhyme in a way that expressed a worldview the way Nas did. You know, just kind of looking outside his window, or being on the block, or explaining the world as he saw it, and at the same time making you feel like, you know, you know, getting the whole feel of Queensbridge, but making you feel like Queensbridge is right where I'm at too. You know, everything's the same. And then the lyrically, from a lyrical standpoint, I've never heard our world view and our hip hop culture and the world that we saw be expressed in such a poetic way. For him to be able to say the things he said and not compromise, he didn't use flowery language, but he still wrote poetry. And that's what stuck out to me. Like, you know, he was able to be authentic to our culture and elevate it.